You're listening to a podcast from the University of Cambridge Department of Engineering. In this series of podcasts, we focus on creative partnerships forged both within different parts of the engineering faculty and with outside companies. It's a cross-disciplinary process which has led to some groundbreaking work both within the UK and across the globe. It leads to the development of long-term relationships or constant creative collaborations. One of the great satisfactions of civil engineering is that uh, the end result is usually of great benefit to the society. I'm Professor Robert Mayer. I'm head of civil engineering at Cambridge University. My speciality is in the field of geotechnical engineering. And geotechnical engineering is about the science and application of the science of how the ground behaves. We have several disciplines. We have tunneling, we have geotechnics, we have civil structures. My name's Mike Black. I'm head of geotechnics for the Crossrail project. And, and between us, we look after the the engineering side of things and, and make sure that things are being constructed as per the requirements. To work on Crossrail is a great achievement. I'm proud to work on it and I'm happy to tell people I'm working on it. My name's Thomas Smith. I am a KTP associate, which is a knowledge transfer partnership and it's a government position funded through the Technologies and Strategies Board, which pioneers and encourages industrial links between industry, such as Crossrail, and research establishments, such as the University of Cambridge. Crossrail is the bold £16 billion London rail link, connecting Maidenhead and Heathrow in the west to Shenfield and Abbey Wood in the east. It will completely revolutionise the way people travel across the capital with high-frequency, high-capacity service to 37 stations, linked via 21 kilometres of new twin-bore tunnels. Those tunnels will weave their way between existing underground lines, sewers, utility tunnels and building foundations at depths of up to 36 metres. It's a mammoth challenge and Cambridge University's engineering department has played a key role right from the start. I first became involved in Crossrail almost 20 years ago when the scheme was first being considered. It's been through a lot of stages since then. I've been involved in advising the Crossrail project on the complexities of constructing tunnels in an urban area. Crossrail is the largest civil engineering project in, in Europe at the moment. I think it's one of the, the top three in the world. We're constructing 21 kilometres of new twin tunnel in London, and these are very big tunnels. They're seven metres diameter. Platforms are typically 250 metres long, and that's designed to take initially 10 car trains, but, but 12 car trains ultimately. The size of the stations, we've got 12 metre wide platform tunnels, huge ticket hall boxes. So it is an enormous project, yeah. As a KTP associate, one could say that I am the middle man. I'm a link between... The University of Cambridge, which provides greater understanding and research capabilities, and Crossrail, which at the same time is needing to know how a particular shaft or asset will behave. Shafts are vertical, big vertical holes in the ground, and they are where the tunnelling often starts from. But the construction of shafts and the behaviour of shafts and how much the ground moves around the shafts is relatively unknown still. And so some of the newest ideas and developments that have taken place at Cambridge is being applied to shaft performance. A colleague is embedding fibre optics within the shaft structure itself, more focus on how the shaft will behave, and particularly as the shaft is excavated, whether we'll be getting the same movements the shaft designers have predicted. Crossrail has designed several of these, these very large shafts and boxes, but the problem is there's not a lot of empirical data which allows us to accurately calculate the magnitude of ground movement that occurs as a result of constructing these shafts. So what tends to happen is people design them very conservatively. The work that we're doing with Cambridge will allow us to get some much more accurate empirical results. We have a series of experiments at Cambridge combined with measurements we make actually of what happens in the field and we combine those two to advance the state of knowledge. It's an advantage that Tom works for Cambridge I think in that he has an equal focus really then from the, the, the theoretical research side as well as 
the actual physical works, the engineering side of things. So it's, it's a perfect balance really between the two organisations. At Cambridge we have an experimental facility which is really unique, an 8 metre diameter centrifuge and we use that for testing a lot of construction projects like tunnels. We can make small scale models of tunnels in clay or in sands representing the ground. What the centrifuge does is, is accelerate the models to very high levels of gravity. So it spins them around and creates very high stresses in them to simulate the same stresses that would be occurring deep down underground. And that's a, that's a very much a pioneering technology. Cambridge is an excellent institute to work with in this sense in, in that they've built up this body of knowledge already. They have the, the facilities and the, and the instrumentation there to take this further. Cambridge has a very strong engineering department in all sorts of ways. One of its great strengths is it is a unified department in that there are no separate departments of civil engineering or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. We're all one department. We work very closely with our colleagues in electronics, for example, and so some of the latest technologies that we are developing on new sensors the new fibre optics I described, for example, is something that Cambridge is uniquely qualified to do because of our interaction with all our colleagues in different parts of the engineering world. So Cambridge is very well placed to take on projects for industry which involve lots of different disciplines. The KTP does provide some fantastic advantages to Crossrail. They know that they've got a full-time student or more principally a geotechnical engineer who is dedicated to one aspect which is key to the Crossrail strategy in the long term. In the end, that's what all engineering is really about. It's the application of science. And so the KTP kind of collaboration that we're doing with Crossrail is a, a really excellent example of that, in that one can see the theories being applied, one can test those theories, and one can then analyse how well they perform in earnest on a major project. There's a gain for everybody. I can see in the long term how it feeds into the strategy for London in the many decades to come. And it also acts as a beacon to other countries within Europe showing that, oh, London can actually deliver. It's just a fantastic project to work on. When the Crossrail project is finished, there will be an amazingly new transport system beneath London, which will make a big difference. Cambridge is a good institute for looking at real world situations, that their research is always practically focused, it's not purely academic. And I think in years to come, Crossrail will continue to work with Cambridge, Crossrail Line 2, other projects later on. We'll continue to tap into that knowledge that they've got and, and hopefully we'll have a very strong relationship with, with them in the future. Professor Robert Mayer and KTP associate Thomas Smith of Cambridge University's Department of Engineering and Mike Black, Head of Geotechnics at Crossrail. You've been listening to a podcast from the University of Cambridge Department of Engineering.